Day 202. As you know, after the last town under Russian control west of the Oskil River capitulated, the Russians were seen launching cruise missiles in the direction of Kharkiv. The target of this missile strike became critical civilian infrastructure, in particular thermal power plants. Even though 7 to 9 out of 11 rockets were reportedly intercepted, some of them still managed to hit the target, which resulted in a massive blackout. The next day, a series of explosions were reported in the Rostov region, which is the territory of the Russian Federation. It was reported that the explosions were in Rostov, Azov, Taganrog, Novoshakhtinsk, Shakhty, Novocherkassk, Aksai, and Yeysk. Of course, this caused huge panic among the civilians, and the most popular explanation became that the Ukrainians got long-range missiles and conducted this missile strike as a direct response to what the Russians did to the Ukrainians' thermal power plants. At first glance, it indeed seems like a missile strike, because the level of coordination required to conduct a sabotage attack on such a large scale is unreal, especially given a high risk of communication being intercepted or exposed. However, the explosions were not simultaneous. There was actually a lag of several hours between some of the reports. As usual, local officials remained quiet, because no one wants to say something wrong. This also indicates that no civilian infrastructure was damaged, otherwise it would be known very quickly. There is even some footage of clouds of smoke outside the towns, indicating that the explosions might have been on the military sites, but there is high risk of the footage being taken from another event. When another explosion was heard in Taganrog, this time the official said that it was as a result of a fighter jet breaking the sound barrier. Overall, the Rostov situation does not give enough reasons to believe that the Ukrainians got missiles. However, there are even better reasons, because the Ukrainians are planning to destroy the Karch Bridge, the shoulder on which the whole Russian southern operation depends, and here is how I think it will be done. You have probably heard that the Ukrainians have been accumulating a lot of forces in the Zaporizhia region, and that is why a lot of you predicted that the Ukrainian counteroffensive will be launched here. And it seems like you were right, because the moment the Kharkiv counteroffensive was finished, the Ukrainians started to regroup and bring even more forces to the southern front line. A lot of analysts named this as the main reason for putting the Ukrainian energy system out of order, because without electricity, the Ukrainians cannot use trains to reinforce this region in a matter of hours. And I agree with this assessment. Unlike the Ukrainians, the Russians need weeks to relocate their forces from Kharkiv to Zaporizhia. Nonetheless, a delay is not a cancellation. The next directions of attack seem to be Melitopol, Mariupol, and most importantly, Berdyansk. From Berdyansk, the Ukrainians can reach the Karch Bridge even with the regular HIMARS rockets. However, you saw that it took more than a month to collapse the Novokakhovka Bridge using these rockets. And the Antonivsky Bridge is still standing. The Karch Road Bridge is even stronger, and the Railway Bridge is even stronger than that. So I do not think that the Ukrainians will bring all of their most sophisticated artillery in one spot and deep in between two fronts to try to put several holes in it. I think that they will just clear the area from air defense and then safely launch several missiles. Now if 20 610mm missiles strike the bridge, this is a completely different story. And you remember that the Ukrainians have sent a lot of drones to test Russian air defense in this spot. And you also remember that the Ukrainians explicitly verified that the US will allow them to use their weapons in Crimea. And Rammstein meeting has happened very recently, and I am inclined to believe that this topic was brought to the table. And of course destroying the bridge is not the sole objective of the third counteroffensive, but it is an objective of strategic importance, because if the Ukrainians cut the supplies to Crimea, and by extension to Kherson, and split the southern front line in two parts, then the Russians will be in a very, very dire situation. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.